God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning to read at verse 7. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise loud shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, the seventh chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds the priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, this he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they, call, they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes I see old pictures. Pictures from a time that no longer exists. Pictures from way back in the year 2019. And in those old pictures, the world looks different. There are no masks, of course, very little concern about personal space, and an alarming lack of distancing. And that is always a bit striking. But more than that, in those old pre-pandemic pictures, I see a people who have not yet lived under the cloud of disease. They have no idea that life is about to stop and change, and change, and change, and scar them in ways 
still not entirely known. They have no idea how many people they will bury. Hundreds of thousands of people killed by a virus of which they have not yet heard. Those pre-pandemic people had no idea how a world would respond to a global pandemic of this magnitude. They couldn't know where the lines would be drawn, where fractures in the foundations of our society would form. They could not predict the fear and the frustration, the fights over masks and vaccines. They probably thought that when confronted by a global crisis, folks would come together to face, as a united people, an insurmountable problem. And they never could have guessed just how long it would last and how much discipline and sacrifice and endurance it would demand of us. When I accepted the call to become your rector, Lo, those many years ago, I came with hopes and plans. I arrived with dreams in my heart and the trust that the God who brought us together would bless our future. I had in my mind an idea of what our shared ministry would look like. I can assure you, those plans did not include navigating a pandemic or recording video sermons from my backyard or answering endless questions about ventilation systems, or celebrating the Eucharist backdropped by that small tree. And yet here we are, sitting on the south lawn, for what I am told will be the last Sunday before returning to the space from which we have long been exiled. This space, this outdoor space, has become a home away from home. It has cradled us for 16 months of Sundays, some of them quite cold, cold enough to inspire a surge in our online viewership, but also to inspire a sense of pride in many of our members, and even a little attention from the national press. Some of the Sundays were very, very sunny, so sunny that I'm glad I know the Eucharistic prayers as well as I do. I have to close my eyes through half of those Eucharists. And almost all of them dry. In June of last year, when many of us had been mostly confined to our homes for weeks, this lawn offered us a place to be together. It was a place where we could see faces in three dimensions and hear other voices recite the words of the Lord's Prayer in concert with our own. Preaching to a people for that first time after three months of preaching to my phone meant more to me than I could have ever anticipated. This lawn hosted Mother Claire's ordination to the priesthood. It was where we welcomed saints through the waters of baptism and where we said goodbye to others. When we received the host in September, after six months of hunger, we did so on this holy ground. This grass has tasted the blood of Christ, and holy waters, and even some candle wax. Like the pews inside, it is now saturated with the prayers of this congregation. After the destruction of the temple by the Babylonians in around the year 587 BCE, and after a long exile, the people of Judah, those who never gave up hope, returned to their land. And from the rubble of their buildings and of their lives, they rebuilt the temple. Not exactly as it was, but as they needed it to be. And they stood in the shadow of that new age, wearing the scars of the past, changed but perhaps more deeply committed to those things that had sustained them in their times of trouble. And in the steely cold of the shadows, their dreams suddenly appeared more vivid. And their laughter meant more because they had earned it. And their joy was more complete because they had walked the valley of the shadow of death. Rather than forget the exile or downplay the pain, they embraced it as sacred memory. 
because it did not last forever. Because the the tears they sowed grew into new songs of joy. And like them, it is now our turn to say, the Lord has done great things for us. And that is why we are here today, together. A community that has survived hard things, that has traversed rocky roads, that has learned to dream the dream of exiles. We have shed tears But we stand in this field with the God of the harvest at our side. The past has taught us what our present is teaching us, that God is with us, that God has a future for us. I stand on this south lawn today and I look around, and it feels to me that while perhaps normal has lost its meaning, our move into the nave will introduce a little normalcy into our lives. And this time of wilderness worship will, I hope, be a strange but special memory. Like the ancient Hebrews, perhaps we will look back on these days when God set a, temp- set a table for us under a blue sky as proof that there is healing even in times of illness. We have made this journey together. Next, we will step into our beautiful building together. And that is the only way we will realize the future God wants for us. Together. We will see better days. We might also see harder days. But our memories will always remind us that the Lord has done great things for us. In the most challenging moments, I have been sustained by your amazing faith and your dedication. In my moments of doubt, I have been humbled by your trust in me and your willingness to walk with God on uncharted paths. After all we have been through, I now see in your faces a warmth able to cut through the coldest wind gust. I hear the hymns of praise you belted into a world of despair. I know the ways your love has reached across distance and divides. It was never my intention when I joined you as your rector to lead you through a pandemic but together we are making our way with love as our compass and grace in our steps. I will never forget. I will always remember these many challenging months, these months of difficult decisions and unprecedented change, these months on the lawn. And when I do, I will be reminded that When life was hard, and when the future was unclear, the Lord did great things for us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, our High Priest, always lives to make intercession for us. Let us cry out to the Lord who hears us and prays for us. We know that you can do all things. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, pray for your church. Increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity. Hold us together as one people with one Lord. Bless the future you have prepared for us. As we anticipate our return to the nave, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful lawn, which has hosted our worship for these many months. We know that you can do all things. Jesus, pray for the world. May all those who live in fear and terror find their deliverance in you. Remove from our land the plagues of violence and fear. Free our nation from all hatred and racism. We know that you can do all things. Jesus, pray for the creation. You are great and all things created through you are good. May we treasure all the gifts from your hand. We know that you can do all things. Jesus, shield the joyous. All things created through you are good. We rejoice with those celebrating birthdays this week. And we celebrate with those celebrating anniversaries. We know that you can do all things. Jesus, pray for those who farm. Bless those who toil so that we may have food to eat and clothes to wear. May their needs be met and their work rewarding. Jesus, pray for those who work places that, whose workplaces places them in harm's way. Deliver them out of all of their troubles. We know you can do all things. Jesus, pray for those who are sick and struggling, those who feel alone and those who mourn. In their affliction, hear their cries and save them from all their troubles. We know that you can do all things. Holy God, keep the dead in your love forever. By offering yourself, you have made us holy. Have mercy on us and bring us to your heavenly country with all your saints to worship in your presence forever. We know that you can do all things. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people 
In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. It's good to see you all today. It's one of those sunny days, right? Well, welcome to Grace and St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. We're glad that you are here with us. If you are visiting, I believe there's a digital visitor card over there somewhere. Yep. And uh, there's other ways to do that as well. You can make yourself known to one of the folks in the congregation. Tell them about yourself. And then you're also, of course, invited to sign up to our, to our Friday email list where you can get an idea of what we have coming up the following week. We would love to have you on that. So, of, cor of course, the big news this week is that hole in that excavator that is backdropping our, back our sound booth. So that is for our ventilation system, which um, I think is... Feels like it, it sounds like it's actually maybe doing something this week, getting ready to be tested. What do you think, Linda? Is that right? That is right. And so that does mean that we are on schedule for next week. And what that looks like is this three services um, so that we can accommodate everyone. We'll have an indoor, a service at 8 o'clock in the nave. That'll be right one, no music. So we figured we had to do more services to accommodate, uh, accommodate people with distancing. We, we might as well do things a little bit differently and. Uh, try some different services, and so we'll do an 8 o'clock right one service without music, a spoken service. At 9 o'clock we'll be on the mem in the memorial garden. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. I've had a lot of emails asking me about that. There's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into them right now, but 9 o'clock in the memorial garden, and that service will accommodate those who uh, might have folks in their family who are uh, not vaccinated or are um, like, you know, like kids, stuff like that. Um, who, might, uh, who might be, ha be immunocompromised or have other reasons that they'd like to just be outside. Maybe they just like to be outside. 9 o'clock in the Memorial Garden. And then 11.15, we will have, uh, we'll have a, a choral mass in the nave. That'll be with the choir. Again, social distancing and masks for those in attendance indoors. We'll also have a formation time. That'll be for folks of all ages at 10.15 until 11 o'clock. And uh, those locations were in the email that I sent out. I won't get into that right now. You can always ask as well. Does that sound good? You got that? You have an idea what time you're going to go? All right, there you go. Good, good. All right, now here's what's happening today. Youth group is happening right after the service. That is for high school. And they'll meet right here on the lawn. 
On Saturday, we are having our tr uh, annual trunk or treat. That'll be in the parking lot right there. Got some whistles for that. I like it. Um, so that's at 5 o'clock. I think Jen might be looking for a few people to uh, host trunks. If you are interested in doing that, that involves making something look cute and uh, your car look cute and giving out candy. Sally, did you have a sign for trunk or treat? Why don't you hand that, hold that up so people can see? There you go. That's, that's, some, that's some solid works. I wanted Sally to have the opportunity to show that off. So you can see Jen or you can see Sally if, you'd like to, if you would like to make a trunk. If you would like to just come, you can just do that. And that is Saturday at 5 o'clock. Show up and get as much candy as you want. We have a food truck, I think, coming as well, so you can eat dinner here if you would like to do that too. We are, we are looking at uh, launching a small group ministry. Mother Claire has been doing some work on that. You might have seen that in the Friday email. If you'd like to learn more about that, please talk to Mother Claire about that. It's an opportunity for small groups, for house groups, to have an opportunity to talk about Scripture. Is that right? And so we'd love to have some folks who'd like to build some relationships within the church and also just have an opportunity to talk more about the Bible. I'm going to do this one more time. Next week, 8, 9, 11, 15, 10, 15 for formation. That includes Sunday school, that includes youth group, and that includes uh, Road to Emmaus. Okay? I'll also be around at that time, so you can ask me questions about the ventilation system. So I'll just walk around and people ask me questions. I'll do that as well. So there's a lot of good ways to support uh, Grace and St. Stephen's and our ministries. And one of the new ways that, that we've been trying recently is text to give. Has anybody tried this yet? Maybe a, one or two of you. I know Sally has. Yeah, there's some folks who have tried it. Uh, excellent. If you'd like to do that, all you have to do is text GSS, Grace St. Stephen's, GSS, and then the amount you'd like to give to support the ministries of the church, to give back to God, to 73256. That spells realm. R-E-A-L-M. I'm guessing that's on purpose. But if it's not, it's a great coincidence. So that's, again, you can text GSS, the amount you'd like to give, to 73256. That's one of the many ways you can give. You can also give at the boxes here to support all the ministries of the parish, all the ways in which we as a community are doing our best to live into God's will for us. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I invite you to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this journey with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. in the past.